Good morning. Good to see uh, you here this morning. Our assemblies uh, certainly are different. We have a small group meeting here at the building. We have a small group that will be uh, assembling on Facebook, and hopefully our, our worship to God this morning is acceptable to him. We're going to sing... Uh, a couple verses of this song, and then Gary will lead us in our opening prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before you this morning, Father. Thankful, Father, for this opportunity to gather together and to praise thee in songs and hymns, to lift up our voices, Father, and <coughs> glorify and honor you. We love you. We thank you. For your son that was willing to die for me, for the whole world, for his willingness, her perfect, his perfection. Father, help us. Help us this morning to put you first in our lives. Help us, Father, to look to you for guidance. Help us, Father, to be the best that we can be. Father, we thank you for the many blessings in life that you've given us, for our hope that we might someday, Father, live with you in heaven forever and ever with no fears and no concerns. Father, each one of us will acknowledge that you are king. Your son is the king of kings. That father, you are in control. No matter what happens in this life, that we can look to you. Each one of us, Father, will acknowledge that. But help us, Father. Help us to live that way. 
Help us to show the world that we have our faith in you. Help us to show our children that we believe in you. And that your work, Father, is still as important as it ever was. And it needs carried out. Father, bless us in our lives. Keep us strong. Give us the heart of a fighter. But help us, Father. We pray at this time, Father, that you be of Charlie as he's leading us in our singing. We thank him for his, his desire, his effort to do so. And we just pray, Father, that each one of us can sing with the heart from the heart, with the understanding and the love meaning every word that we say. Father, our prayer today is that our worship is accepted by you. Father, our prayer today is that you be with those that are sick and afflicted, down and out, whether it's, it's just finances, whether it's emotion, or whether it's an illness, the flu, the virus, whatever's got us down, Whatever discourages us in our life, help us, Father. Pick us up. Heal us. And let us carry on. Father, we pray that you be of Ernie this morning as he speaks your word. We thank you, Father, for Ernie and for Jason and the work they do here. May they, Father, keep it up. May they be servants of yours for a long time, speaking your word, speaking it in truth. Help them, Father, to recollect the words in which they've studied, the words in which they want to say. But help them, Father, to speak it in love. Speak it as, as they mean it, but not compromising your word in any way. Father, we pray that you be with this congregation. You bring us back together as one big happy family as we can all meet in one. Bless the ones that are home. Bless the ones that are here. Father, we ask that you be with this country. We ask, Father, that you guide us in the direction in which this country can go. May each one of us look to you for guidance in the upcoming election. And may we vote our vote in the direction that you would want. Be with those that are suffering, that feel left out, that feel like they have to cause a disturbance. Bless them, Father. And may everyone in this world come to you before it is everlasting too late. But, Father, if there be anyone in this room today that, whether they be here or whether they be at home, if they have a need, help, Father, them to let that need be known. Help us to do all that we can do. Father, our prayer today is that you be with us. You accept our worship. You give us the heart of the fighter. And Father, most of all, we continue to serve you. Forgive us where we fail. For we pray in your son's precious name. Amen. Following this song, Ethan Knotts will uh, read the scripture for the morning.
I will be reading from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Then they arose early in the morning, and worshipped before the Lord, and returned, and came home, and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. Good morning. morning. It is so good to be able to be here, to worship with you, to gather together. And I hope that everyone has had a blessed week and that everyone is doing well. God is good all the time. And we are blessed to know that God cares for us and that he takes care of us each and every day of our lives. We know that we have some that are traveling. And it was was before mentioned, Carter, I believe, has finished almost one or two weeks now of uh, school down at Freed Hardman. And Jeremiah and Kayla just returned. I know Brooks' classes have already started. So Brooks has got his classes going on at Marietta College, so we want to keep all of them in our thoughts and prayers. I know that our Warren students go back this week, uh, Thursday and Friday. will be the first two days for the middle school and high school students. And I also know that the elementary school has just a few more days. I don't think Brody starts until the 21st of September. But there's also others that are doing... Uh, and other schools at Waterford starting, I believe, tomorrow, and others that are going to be starting in the near future. So let's keep all of our young people in your thoughts and your prayers and the teachers as well as they go back. We've been doing a series of lessons entitled Sent, and talking and looking there at different individuals within the context of God's word that have been sent, sent to do a job, sent to, with a purpose, sent to share the gospel, or to, sent to share God's will with others. Some of the examples that we've looked so far at have been ones such as John the Baptist, is the one crying in the wilderness. We also looked at Ananias going before Saul of Tarsus, who we now, later in life, we typically refer to as the Apostle Paul, and sharing with him. And there we see Paul is baptized, and his life is changed, and he begins a work that we're going to look at later in this series. And then just last week, or two weeks ago, I apologize, we talked about Moses, And Moses being fearful and having anxiety and being uncertain and having doubt in himself that he could go and do what God wanted him to. But we believe that God is who God is as God said, I am who I am. Tell them that's who has sent you. And he told Moses that you're capable, that you're able to go and to share with others. Well, this morning we're going to study a little bit different. We're going to start it looking at another individual who carried that thoughts or those processes and it starts with Hannah as was read for us this morning by brother Ethan Hannah is here pleading with God pleading because she's been barren she's not been able to have a child and initially Eli who here is the priest thinks that she's drunk because he sees her lips moving but there is no sound coming out of her and he accuses her of being drunk And then we saw what Brother Ethan read for us, and we find out about Hannah a little bit more. Now, if you'll open your Bibles with me here to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, looking here at verses 26 through 28, this is where we find this account coming more to a conclusion as far as what's been going on with Hannah. And she said, O my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. Here she's speaking to Eli, the priest. For this child I prayed, and the Lord granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. She makes a promise, that is Hannah, 
that if God will allow her to bear a child, that she will give him to the Lord to use all the days of his life. All the days of his life. Now, I would be hard-pressed as a parent not to say, I would want something that for my child, wouldn't we? And that what we would want for our children, that God would use them, that God would allow to live and thrive in their lives, and that they would allow God to be present in their life in such a way that they would live their life or that he would be lent to them for their duration of time here on earth. Isn't that what we would want as a parent for our child? I believe that's what my parents wanted for me, that they wanted me to be used by God. Isn't that what we desire is to be used by God for his goodwill and for his good measure and pleasure, to use us to be beneficial for his life? And this is the promise that Hannah has made, that I will allow him to be lent, that I will lend him to God to use for whatever he needs. What we find here at the end of Hannah's prayer in 1 Samuel chapter 2, then Elkanah went to his house at Ramah, but the child ministered to the Lord before Eli the priest. He has been left there, and he is now working for this priest, working for Eli to be a worker, a worshiper, a minister to the Lord on his behalf and for him. And when we look here at Samuel, Samuel has an incredible beginning story before he's ever able to get to the point where he comes before God and says, here I am and use me. And that's what we want to look at this morning because Samuel's beginnings, as I believe we'll find, were very difficult, were very challenging. And sometimes to be sent to do work for God, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be simple, but it's going to be difficult. And as we begin our study this morning, let us enter into a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, humbled servants of yours. Father, we love you and we praise you. Father, as we open up your word and as we study, Father, we pray that our minds will be free of the stresses and the strifes of the world, the problems in our day-to-day lives, that we can allow our minds to come to you, our hearts to be open to you, to be able to receive your word gladly, to be refreshed, to be renewed, to be encouraged to be restored by it. Allow this time that we spend together in worship to you, Father, to be a time of honor and praise and to thank you for the many blessings that you've given to us in our life and how you've allowed us to come here and worship you again. Father, how you've brought us here safely. Father, we pray that this morning as we study that we'll see some of those same challenges in our lives about how it's difficult sometimes to be sent by you, to be used by you, to allow you to live and thrive in our lives because of the situations and the circumstances that come into our lives. Father, we're so thankful for your love and your mercy, your grace. Father, we're thankful for your patience and your forgiveness with us. Father, we have a number of our congregation who are are dealing with illnesses, who are dealing with heartache and dealing with sorrow. Father, we pray that you'll heal them and that you'll comfort them. We pray that you'll be with our membership who are unable to attend because of the current pandemic. We pray that they are well in their homes and that as they worship from a distance and come to be with us soon, Father, we pray that you'll bless their lives. Allow us to work with each other, to help one another, to assist one another in whatever ways we can here on earth. But Father, allow us to be sent to be your disciples, to be your children, to be your mouth to the world so they may know your love, your grace, and your mercy. And they may know the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Father, we love you and we praise you in all things. And it's in your son's name we do pray. And amen. Here I am, an easy thing to say, a more difficult thing to do. And what we find as we begin studying here in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and in verse 18, there's some important things that we need to look at here as we get into our study. It says there, it says, but Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child wearing a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother used to make him a little robe 
and bring it to him year by year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli was, would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, The Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. Then they would go to their own home, and the Lord visited Hannah. So she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Not only did God bless her with this child Samuel, but he blesses her now with five more children. This woman who was barren, this woman who could not have child. And her husband even goes as far to say, am I not as good as ten sons would be to you? Talking about how much he loved her and cared for her in 1 Samuel chapter 1. He loved her and he cared for her. And I believe beyond a fan of a doubt that it broke his heart to see her longing and hurting like this. But Eli the priest prays with her and says, may he bless you even more. But I want you to notice a couple things here. Samuel ministered before the Lord. Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. You know, our children grow in God. They grow and they become more, more encouraged by his love and by his compassion when they read of the way that he acts and lives in our lives. And when they grow in that way, how else are they going to grow but in a way that they would serve God? This was Samuel's life. This is the way his life opened up. This is the way his life began, was ministering before the Lord. And he grew before the Lord. We read of another young man, a small child, a young child doing that as well in Luke chapter 2. It says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus here, after the situation where he was teaching in the temple, it says he grew, he increased with God and with man. Well, Ernie, you might say that's not really the most fair of statements. You know, he was the son of God. Samuel was a gift from God to Hannah who could have no child. And she lent him to the Lord. They grew in God. We grow in God. What's easy for me today wasn't easy for me a few days ago, maybe, or a few weeks ago, or a few years ago. We grow and we become better at what we do. We become more devoted, Lord willing. We become more committed, Lord willing, to doing better each and every day of our lives. We increase, and that's what we do as Christians. We increase, we grow, we develop, we mature. And this child grew being there while he ministered to God. But why? Why would this have to be the case? Well, you see, the sons of Eli were wicked men. He had two sons. They were wicked, godless men. Now, the sons of Eli were worthless men, it says in the English Standard Version. They did not know the Lord by their choice. They chose not to know God. They didn't do as they were told. They didn't do as they were instructed. Eli even goes as far to say at some point in time that you're basically an embarrassment to me because you refuse to do what God has commanded, what he has shared with them, what he has encouraged them. His sons have gone against the will of God. And that's one of the reasons we see the importance of Samuel being here. Because his two sons should have followed in his lineage, should have been the ones that came after him. But I want you to notice a few things about Samuel. Samuel, you, you were an answer to God, to your mother's prayer before God. You were an answer to your mother's prayer. You were promised to God by your mother before you were ever born. Samuel, maybe you didn't have a whole lot of options in this. Maybe you didn't have a lot of thoughts. It wasn't necessarily your decision. You were brought to the priest to fulfill that promise to the child. And you were with the priest as a child. It says just after being weaned, it tells us there at the end of chapter 1. And your parents, it says if we go back and look in chapter 2, it says that they saw him when they came there yearly. Can you imagine as a child this morning, if you only saw your parents once a year? Once. Parents, can you imagine only seeing your child once a year? What a great 
sacrifice, maybe we would say, Hannah and her husband made Elkanah for this child because of the promise of God. And you as a child were ministering to the Lord. When you look at Samuel's beginnings and Samuel's introduction, maybe we look at it a little bit like Moses and the fact that his early childhood was very complicated. But you see, he grew up then in the house of Pharaoh. Samuel grows up with the priest. Sometimes it's not always the easiest road to follow God. And the priests you were left with had sons that were wicked, lawless, worthless. You see, Samuel didn't have great examples by Eli's sons. And it's fearful as to what could have happened because it was a difficult beginning. It was a challenging beginning. And you know, it doesn't end well if you go on and you read through the next few chapters of 1 Samuel. God says that your, your sons are not going to go down this route. They're not going to follow the will of God. He says your house is not going to continue. It's going to break. It's going to crumble. It's going to fall apart. He warns Eli about all of this. His sons, they die. They're both killed and murdered in battle against the Philistines. One man escapes. Several thousand people die. Foot soldiers die in that battle. The ark is stolen, is taken away by the Philistines. And one man escapes and comes back, and he tells Eli what's happened. As Eli's sitting there, Eli falls back as a large man, and it says that he died. He broke his neck. One of the son's wives, I believe it was Phineas' wife, she goes into child labor, has her child, and she dies from it because of the great sorrow that comes on. This is Samuel's introduction to life, and it's difficult, but he's given for a purpose to the Lord. So when we continue, life's not always going to be butterflies and bunny rabbits, as I like to say sometimes. It's not always going to be cute, fuzzy moments full of happiness and joy. There are going to be difficult moments in life. And this is where we have to find ourselves sometimes realizing that the difficulties that we face in life, maybe like the coronavirus and COVID-19, God is going to find a way to use us just as he found a way to use Samuel during his difficult times. And Samuel says, here I am, Lord. And that's where we're going to pick up here with the early life again of Samuel before all of this catastrophe with Eli's sons and the loss of his own life occurs. And notice what it says here in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see and before the lamp of God went out and the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was and while Samuel was lying down, verse 4, and the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. And he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. And he went and he lay down. The next two verses. And then the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And then the next two verses again, verses 8 and 9. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and he said, here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Before Eli said to Samuel, therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be. And if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Do we notice how quick Samuel was to say, Here I am? There was no hesitation. The text doesn't tell us he complained about getting up and going there and Eli saying, oh, no, go back and lay down again. And then he hears it called again. He gets up immediately and goes. No, it's not me that needs you. Go back and lay down. He goes back and lay down. No, it's not me that needs you when he gets a third call. 
And then Eli says to him, said, say this, because I say this when you're called again. And we pick up there with the thoughts of here I am. Samuel is ready and quick to serve. He's willing to do whatever it is that's needed or asked or expected of him. Samuel's willing to be there for God and for his will. And we pick up here in verse 10. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak for your servant hears. I want us to think for just a moment the way Samuel responded. He says, your servant, your servant. What a wonderful perspective that Eli shared with him and that Samuel is again now repeating. Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. And in that day, I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from the beginning to end, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his sons made themselves vile, and he did not restrain them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. I told him that this was coming. Eli knew because he did not restrain his sons. He spoke against them, but he didn't stop them. He didn't change it. He didn't hold them to the accountability. And he tells Samuel this. And then what we find following is Eli asks Samuel, did the Lord speak to you? And he says, yes. And he says, tell me everything that he said. Can you imagine being the young child that has to deliver the bad news to the one who takes care of you, to the one who meets your needs, to the one who has been there for you, who you've been left with, who you've been ministering to the Lord by, who you've been in an apprenticeship almost with, that you have to deliver this bad news to him? Sometimes life's difficult, right? Sometimes, as Samuel, he has to tell Eli things that he's not sure he wants to tell Eli because he might be a little uncomfortable with it. But Eli's so persistent, he says, tell me. And then you also have Samuel having God saying, this is what's going to happen. People's ears are going to tingle when they hear it because of how difficult it's going to be. Samuel did not have the easiest beginning to being sent by God because it was difficult. It was challenging. It was hard. And when you encounter difficult moments in being sent by God, the one thing that we can never forget is a verse such as Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. If we're being sent by God to do something difficult, he's not leaving us there to do it by ourselves. He's not going to leave us there by ourselves to go through that. And we find in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and in verse 35, he made the comment. He says, I will raise up for myself, God speaking to Eli, a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house and he will go in and out before my anointed forever. He was talking about Samuel. Jeremiah even goes on to talk about this in a very similar context. He goes, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest, the one who's been given or lent to God. God was with Samuel. He wasn't doing this on his own accord. He wasn't doing this by his own desires and his own wills. His will was to follow God's word. He ministered to the Lord. He did what God wanted him to. And God says, you'll be my faithful priest. You're going to be the one who does what is in my heart and in my mind. And he says, and I will build him a house. The power of God working through Samuel. Now we find in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 3 through 5, now Samuel was being sent to carry out a difficult message after the death of Eli, after the death 
of his sons after Israel has been turning their back on God. And he delivers to them a difficult message from God. Here I am, God. Use me. I'm here to be used by you to do your will, God. And this is what God uses him to do. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods and the Ashtaroths from among you and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only. He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the Baals and the Ashtaroths and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. Think about this. This is Samuel. They've now, since chapter 3, we find all of this has gone on in these four chapters. And he says, You've turned your back on God. He will deliver you from the Philistines. Now, there's a lot of different things in my mind that could picture me looking at Samuel as being someone caught in the middle and being angry at him for him judging me and him telling me what I need to do and what I need to change. But you see, he said, this is my faithful servant. I will put, he will do my will. He will follow my word. He will do what's in my heart. And Samuel spoke to the children of Israel in a difficult moment because they were away from God. He says, I will deliver you from the hands of the Philistines. And that's exactly what he did. We read of a great thunder that comes and all of the Philistines are confused and they're gone. The ark is brought back. Samuel says, I will pray to the Lord for you, but you've got to get rid of your idols. You've got to get rid of the things that you worship that are not God's. Samuel delivers a difficult message to share with them, to encourage them for there to be change in their lives. Samuel, in the midst of a difficult situation, says, here I am. Use me, Lord. How many difficult situations have we found ourselves in our lives that maybe we stuttered or we hesitated to say, God, here I am. I know it's not going to be easy. I know it's going to be challenging. But here I am, Lord, use me. Or maybe when we are faced with a situation where he's trying to use us in a difficult moment, maybe we're a little bit hesitant to say, here I am. I mean, you can picture in your mind, I'm thinking of a classroom setting right now, and a teacher asks a question, and you have the kid who's very slowly putting their hand up, maybe even shaking a little bit, or the kid who immediately turns away to hope that the teacher doesn't see them and that they won't call on them. Because in difficult times, doing God's work, it might be a little more challenging to say, here I am, God, use me. But Samuel, he was lent to God. He was used in a difficult time to bring Israelites out from underneath the hand of the Philistines to change what had been the standard in the house of Eli with his sons before God, someone who wanted the heart of God, someone who was willing to follow the will of God and to take a stand during a difficult time and say, here I am. I mentioned that we're never alone because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, as he's giving the great commission and a difficult time, Jesus has just been killed on the cross. He's been buried. He's been raised from the dead. They see the power of God living through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he tells them, go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every living creature. And he says, I am always with you. When we take a stand and say at a difficult time, Lord, here I am, we're never alone because he is always with us. He's never left us. He will never forsake us. He is always with us. Are you willing to say, here I am in a difficult time and stand for God to be sent to do his work, to do his will, to be the one who follows his heart, the one who follows his will? 
to be his priest, to be his servant. I'm your servant, God. Use me. Here I am. And the reminder that we'll never be alone and that he'll always be with us. This morning, are you allowing God to use you in difficult times? Are you willing to say, here I am, and know that you're not alone? This morning, if you're not a Christian, one of the most fearful things that I can ever think of is being without God and being uncertain of my eternal future. I read this past week, somebody had put a post on Facebook, and I've read it a thousand times before. But as I was preparing this lesson, it kind of stayed in my mind. It is a difficult thing to stand with God and be judged by the world. It is a fearful thing to stand with the world and to be judged by God. Here I am in a difficult time. Use me, Lord. Send me. This morning, if you're not a Christian, why aren't you standing with God? Why aren't you allowing him to live and to work in your life? What's keeping you from putting him on in baptism, to confessing your sins, to repenting of your sins, confessing him as your Lord and Savior, believing that he is the Savior of your life? What's stopping you from committing your life to him and saying, here I am? This morning, if you're a Christian who's struggling, remember, you're never alone. You're not the only one who's gone or is going through difficult times. Stand for God. He will never leave you by yourself. This morning, if you're not a Christian or if you need to come home, we encourage you to come while we stand and while we sing.
Be seated, please. Following this song, we will be led in our observance of the Lord's Supper. So let us consider as we sing, as we prepare, let us uh, remember what God has done for us. It's wonderful to be able to meet together on the Lord's Day and to surround the table in memory of our Lord. The songs that we have sung today have reminded us of many things. They have reminded us of God's holiness They have reminded us of his power and his greatness. And now we have been reminded of God's goodness towards us. You know, we can see God's greatness and his power all around us. And we can see his goodness And it is certainly manifested, that goodness, when we consider what we are about to do today. That while we were yet sinners, God sent his son to die for us. So that we might have our anchor safely cast. we can be redeemed to God. We can only have that salvation because of what Jesus endured and did for us at Calvary. And he did that willingly for us. He laid down his life. It was not taken from him. He gave it up for you and I so that we could be with him someday and with the Father. You know, Jesus knew the Father. He came from the Father to this earth to show us the Father and to give us a way back to the Father. And that is where he is now, and that is where he longs for us to be. But that is our choice. And thanks be to God that we have such a Savior that has given us the opportunity to be with him forever, despite our weaknesses and our faults. So let us be reminded today of God's goodness. Jesus reminded us there is none good but God. And certainly that goodness is shown in what we are about to do now. At this time, let us please bow as we give thanks for the bread. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to remember the sacrifice of your son upon that cross of Calvary. 
Father, we are reminded of your goodness. Father, we are so thankful for that goodness. We know, Father, that without your goodness, without this sacrifice, we had no hope. But we praise you, Father, and give you thanks through Jesus, your Son, that we have the opportunity to accept him in this life and to have redemption from our sins. Father, may we be reminded today of the pain and the agony that he willingly endured. Father, may our minds go back to those scenes at Calvary so many years ago. And Father, may we never forget the price, the ultimate price that he paid for us there. Again, Father, we ask you to bless this bread as we break it in memory of his body today. And we pray, Father, that we will live our lives in a way that would bring honor and glory to you and to Jesus, our King. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue our thanks. Father, as we continue our remembrance, we are reminded, Father, of the blood that was spilt. Father, we're thankful for this cup, the fruit of the vine, which reminds us of that. Father, we're thankful for, again, the sacrifice of Jesus for us thankful father for his blood for the power of his blood to cleanse us from all of our sin father help us today again as we partake of it to remember what he endured for us there again father may we be good stewards and followers of you all the days of our life May we never forget what he did for us there. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we have an opportunity at this time to give thanks to God for the blessings. Again, we are reminded of his goodness every day of our lives, and he has given us an opportunity to work in his kingdom as a congregation, and we're thankful that we have the opportunity to do that. I'm thankful for our membership, for remembering how he has blessed us each week and um, all of our members even those who are not here today are continuing to contribute to that work so that we can carry on so let us uh, go to God in prayer at this time as we uh, give him thanks for the opportunities that we have father in heaven we bow in a heart of thanksgiveness thankful father for all that you have done for us. Father, we thank you now for the opportunities that we have to work in your kingdom. We pray, Father, that we will always look, Father, to do your will, to bring others to you. We're thankful, Father, that we are able to contribute in a monetary way to help us with those efforts, to help us 
relieve the suffering of others. We just pray, Father, that we will always be mindful of these opportunities. Father, to not let them slip through our hands. We pray, Father, that we will always be mindful of what we can do. We're thankful, Father, may everything that we do bring glory and honor to your name. Father, because without you and without your goodness, we would not be able to be able to do these things. Again, Father, bless our efforts as a congregation to continue to work for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. morning. I'd like to start off by thanking you all for being here and those that are home watching. Uh, we love you and we miss you and uh, look forward to the day that we can all come back together here to building again. Um, I don't have a whole lot uh, on a second prayer list. I, I do have uh, Denver and Sandy Collins both. Uh, Denver is doing well and off oxygen. Uh, Sandy Collins was in the hospital but is at home with back home now, so uh, that's uh, good news to hear. Uh, Denver Horn had an appointment to, to plan treatment, and I have a heart and cancer treatment. Um, I'm not sure of any uh, additional details on that. If you have any, then uh, you know, let us know. Um, but we definitely wanna keep, uh, keep them in our prayers uh, as they are recovering and dealing with uh, things of this world. Um, our condolences go out to Sharon Lewis with the passing of her brother-in-law, Phil Rogers. So we want to keep that family in our prayers and our thoughts as we go forward this week. Um, is there any other announcements or, uh, Ernie? Uh, 24th, Ryan's mom is still doing uh, breast cancer. I know everybody's going to be Okay, I, I didn't hear the uh, the first name there. Uh, the first name was Connie Ford, that's Brian's mom. Okay, Connie Ford, uh, Brian's mom. And then, uh, I apologize, Justin Abbott. I've got those added to, to the list up here so we can continue to uh, pray for them and, and everything that needs to happen there. Um, Obviously, Colonel A, you know that you know, Dana's kidneys were shutting down. They took him in from a bloodstream fusion, and uh, he's retaining a lot of fluid. And also, he had to evacuate his other spire. So if you didn't hear that, Dana, Dana Rose, his uh, kidneys are shutting down and he's retaining fluid and was also evacuated. Uh, he's out in California. Um, a lot of wildfires going on out, out there right now. I've seen some video. It uh, looks pretty scary out there, to be honest with you. And I was a firefighter for five years, and that's just, it, it looks scary to me. So let's uh, keep him in your prayers, plus everybody out in California dealing with the wildfires and of course, obviously the pandemic, everything going on right now. Um, other announcements are online worship, Bible study, Sunday evening at 5 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, uh, a midweek Bible study will be at 7. This is all online. Uh, Thursday, children's Bible study will be at 7 p.m. On, on Thursday, as I said. Um, I just want to say again, Ernie mentioned it earlier about the kids going back to school. You know, it'll be more traffic, kids alongside the road waiting on buses. Uh, the, the normal stuff, we just need to keep an eye out for them and, you know, uh, just pray that they have a good year. Uh, pray for the teachers that are going back. It's going to be a difficult, you know, transition going back with everything going on. The kids are going to be expected to to do a lot more than what was expected before and obviously with the social distancing it 
makes it harder for a lot of kids that have been away and not seen their friends all all summer and you know I'm I just I pray that it's a good year for them I'll I'll, I'll leave it at that but if there's nothing else I'll uh, lead us in a closing prayer and I believe we'll have one more song and be dismissed Heavenly Father, we ask at this time that you uh, be with us as a congregation, that uh, you continue to help us grow and become stronger each day. Father, that we can uh, take any uh, message and, and that we've heard, that we can take it out into the world, that we can share it with others. Father, that we can uh, maybe be strong for somebody that is dealing with a heartache or, or a loss of a loved one maybe or just feeling down, uh, being alone, Father, that we can uh, just be, uh, be there for them, be a shoulder for them to, to cry on if need be, or an ear to listen to their story. Father, we ask that you be with those that were mentioned on the sick list. Father, that you will be with the doctors and nurses, give them the guidance that they need to help heal those bodies. Father, uh, be with uh, all the teachers and the kids as they go back to school. Father, that uh, we ask that they have a good year, that, that this pandemic will not uh, be the defining moment for them this year. Father, uh, with everything, uh, we thank you, we love you, uh, and it's through your son that I pray. Amen. We'll sing the two verses and then the chorus one time, and at the conclusion of the song, uh, you'll be dismissed. Let us all please stand. <laughs>